welcome to CXO, a magical podcast to help you serve better and concoct experiences that are superlative in nature. I'm your host, Supriya Sharma, bringing to you in each episode didactic nuggets so you can get inspired to sprinkle stardust in your company, your home, and the community on the whole. guest today, Bhavna Bindra, Managing Director, South Asia at Rehau. A graduate of IIM Bangalore, Bhavna did her economics honors from Sriram College of Commerce, Delhi University. Having joined the corporate world, starting with Boston Consulting Group, she spent a significant portion of her time in the manufacturing and engineering sector while working at Cummins in India. An active writer, an eminent speaker, Bhavna has been recognized on several platforms for her work as a corporate leader, including the Economic Times 40 Under 40, the corporate dossier Spencer Stewart India INC's Rising Women Leaders, and the Machinist Women Leader in Manufacturing. Welcome to CXO, Bhavna. Thank you, Sophia. In your career spanning over two decades in the corporate world, you must have come across and you must be practicing the lingo that we use. We say the happy customers are a result of happy employees or the formula as we say it, happy employees is equal to happy customers. Now, to what extent do you think it satisfies the feasibility of business operations? So when, when you say feasibility of business operations, uh, did you mean the necessity of business operations? Absolutely, the necessity and uh, the reason that businesses are into place, the commercial part of it as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes, you're right. Uh, I think happy employees are at the base, the foundation of an organization or a business, whichever way you want to put it, that successfully caters to customers. To me, you know, the way I have learned it, uh, very early on and thereafter practiced it is like everything speaks and if we are talking about taking care of our customers we need to have employees who may be catering to customers and when I say customers let's say the end users people who actually pay us for the services or the products we provide so when we are talking about employees catering to customers they themselves need to exude that passion that comes with both an internal satisfaction that a person feels as well as what it is that they bring to the table. To me, both of them come together to cater to what would be a successful organization taking care of its customers because, yeah, customers are at the center of it all. And uh, I mean, just think about an unhappy employee who's, let's say, a service engineer who needs to go and service a particular equipment or let's say an appliance at your or my home. I, I just cannot imagine what that would do to me as the user of that appliance if I have this person walk in edgy, uncomfortable, don't know why I'm here, why I need to be doing this. And all of this because internally, when he is the customer, he or she is the customer to somebody else in the organization, he's not taken care of. So to me, line and bottom line, but in the process, that entire chain that enables that needs to be taken care of. And that's important for every employee in the organization. Did I answer your question? Makes sense. Makes sense. But I have something to ask you here, something as an offshoot of what you just answered. Sometimes treating employees well, which of course we should be doing that, whether as employers or employees ourselves. But so treating our team members and employees well sometimes has a consequence. What I mean to say here is uh, when we call themselves internal customers, 
sometimes employees are referred to as internal customers, which is kind of an obsolete term nowadays. Nowadays, we call them service partners. The only reason being, the moment we call them customers, they're like, okay, internally, we are your customers, so you need to do 10 different kinds of things for us. That Those are the kind of demands they have from their employers. So have you ever faced this kind of a situation in your career where you uh, thought or you experienced such employees taking advantage of the happy employees equal to happy customers policy? Have you ever faced that? That's a very good question. You know, um, it comes in various forms. You know, there are um, employees who know their value to the organization. Mm -hmm. And of course, they demand a value in return whether that value in return in terms is in terms of taking care of them um, via monetary benefits or maybe uh, non-monetary benefits or in terms of okay when i have a situation that i need to take care on my personal front you will stand up to me mm -hmm. and support me yes. so yes there are situations where when employees know that they are important to an organization they actually demand it mm -hmm. but more than that i would actually say it's the right of an employee to be catered to when the organization needs them it's the same logic if i'm looking at it so so if if an employee so let's say if i look at a service function or a support function mm -hmm. it's, it's just easier sometimes when we use the term support function so let's say we are talking about hr um, as a support function for an employee if there are things that an employee needs from an HR perspective. Yes, the employee is the internal customer, or let's just call customer. I mean, okay. internal, external, doesn't matter. Is the customer for that support function and needs to be taken care of. So to me, the way we feel ownership, because there is an end user or a customer of our product, of our solution, of our service, the same way we need to be feeling the ownership with our employees so to me yes in an organization everybody needs to know that they are taking care of a customer whether that customer is my employee yeah. my vendor my uh, channel partner let us view all of them as customers to whom we are catering to because only then will we have that entire cascading effect of success that ultimately results in what we are all here for in business, which is the top line and more importantly, the bottom. Hmm. But then how do you find an equilibrium when you have such employees who realize their value and sometimes they demand more than what actually should be demanded in certain cases <laughs> in terms right. of customer experience then? Absolutely, absolutely. No, so yes, the... I think it's, uh, I, I like the term you used, equilibrium. You know, to me, the point that comes to my mind when I hear the term equilibrium is this often spoken about work-life balance. And, and I know you were not thinking that when you were talking equilibrium within the organization. To me, it's the same thing. You know, when somebody says, how do you maintain work-life balance? And I'm like, actually, I am constantly in that struggle of maintaining work-life balance. And the day anybody has figured out how to maintain work-life balance, they've probably attained nirvana. Because the minute you thought you figured it out, something else will come and so-called shake that equilibrium that you thought you had maintained. The same thing applies in organizations. Yes, there are days when an employee expects more than you think they deserve. And then there are days when the organizations expect more. And I think the it is not about... Uh, do we maintain the equilibrium all the time? It is about, by and large, do we feel, so as an employee, do I feel I'm taken care of, the organization values me, I am important to the organization, they are looking out for me, looking at my future. If by and large, I think of it that way, then that equilibrium has been attained. Yes, there will be, it's, it's almost like, you know, you look at the long-term mm. trend and then the short-term has these ups and downs, right? That's so as long as the long term trend is understood and there is that by and large we are good over here, there is it's always human. I mean, we are organizations, we are groups of humans, right? At the end of the day, who come together to achieve a common objective. And just the way it's inside our homes, 
there are days when you know you're not too happy there are days when you're like ecstatic and you know you've got your little squabbles but you've got your happiness all the time and by and large you're like this is a good life that's to me what equilibrium is yeah absolutely it's just like a family as you explained to us great right so in your experience uh, which of the three strategies do you really think work for business growth or differentiation I'm, the three strategies that i'm talking about here are what we've been talking about or reading about conventionally in our management books you know we have the product leadership we have the cost leadership and then we have this whole new dimension of customer experience or the service component of business so which of these in your experience think it really works it delivers results what is it so so to me uh, you know i'd love to give the uh, the uh, answer that most people would think it yeah it's customer centricity but the point here that i actually want to uh, make is i don't think it's an either or you know you may be a product leader you may be a cost differentiator but customer centricity is at the base of it and for me irrespective of being a product leader or a cost leader if you are not customer centric mm-hmm. you're not going to get anywhere in the long run or even if you thought you got there despite not being there believe me it's a matter of time and somebody is going to take your lunch away because people have figured out that the customer or people like you and me have just become smarter about what we think we deserve because we are willing to give also as much to whatever our organizations our homes our families and we do not shy away from demanding so whether you are in those three that you named uh, a product leader or a cost leader you better have your customer centricity your customer focus in place otherwise like i said it's a matter of time and there will be another cost leader or product leader who's just going to get that much notch above and take it all away from you I love the way you diagrammed it actually to me it looks like a pyramid then where at the base we have customer experience or customer centricity in the organization which is mandatory and a must have regardless of the right. industry you belong to and regardless of the size of your organization and then we could choose from whether we want to be a product differentiator or we want to be a cost leader depending on the segment we are in so in fact um, i like the fact that you realized i was trying to have a diagram here almost because i was actually thinking of something like an acropolis mm-hmm. right and you've got these pillars and you can think about cost leadership product differentiation and so on and so mm-hmm. forth and at the base of it all sits the customer right to me well all of them is about the customer because when you're talking about product leadership you need to know what the customer wants when you're talking about cost leadership absolutely the customer is like give me the most competitive product around so to me at the end of it every one of these strategies has the customer at the base of it and nobody is getting anywhere without catering to what the customer wants i think yes we've been in a time and i i can talk from an india specific mm-hmm. uh, uh, environment there have been companies and, and i've been very proudly associated with some of them who in the past been able to get away without it but then there comes a time you may be the market leader you 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 can be the monopoly around to begin uh-huh. with and then people start coming in and the minute people start coming in and you've got a great product you've got the right price all of that sorted but when you see competition coming in it's the customer centricity that helps you maintain that edge and that most organizations who have realized it have made it happen and as they make it happen it becomes very difficult for competition to take away that leadership such companies do and you spoke of something as a customer whether you me or anybody as a customer we become more aware and we become more demanding we know what we really want and uh, we are really assertive about that we don't shy away from saying what we want do you think uh, is it because of the social media or there is some other reason of customers behavior changing in this manner i i would say um 
I think one is absolutely, you know, the point around awareness. So the more exposed we are to what is available elsewhere, uh, to, the more we are connected. So yes, knowledge and information is one. The second is the connectedness. So, you know, just think about you and me talking, you know, offline in a conversation. Hey, um, you know, I was trying to get this appliance repaired and this guy didn't turn up. And then you're like, oh, but you know, when I was having a similar experience, I was awesomely taken care of and this mm. is the way to deal with it. And then suddenly I'm like, hey, why, why is this not happening with my service and my requirements? And there you go. You have just become more aware, mm -hmm. number one. Number two, I think there is also a lot of choice that is available. So a lot of people have realized that in the entire life cycle of a customer experience, we may be at different stages. And depending on which stage you are, there is a scope to make a lot more happen. So there is this whole uh, availability of choice that from a business point, I will make happen. And also as a customer, there is just so much more choice resulting from that availability that allows me to be more discerning and more demand. And I, I, there is very little that behaves in a similar monopolistic manner that may have been the case. And again, um, my experience primarily from India, let's say two or three decades ago. So, so you know, I mean, even family conversations around the table when you have multiple generations sitting and it happens a lot at our place. Mm. We do exchange our views on how life has changed and how service has taken on a new meaning. But then there is also a flip side. Mm. The, the more you are becoming aware, the more there is choice coming, there's always a question mark. Are we becoming more impersonal? And are we trying to get more things done um, by you know using uh, let's say um, do it yourself activities oh. so the whole DIY piece or are we uh, you know saying it's better to just replace it this is it so you know the whole uh, the whole argument around recyclability has gone down the drain in some cases so yes there is a flip side to it but that that isn't the intent uh, right now on this point but awareness mm -hmm. choices it's all what has led to customers becoming, uh, I would say, uh, more discerning. It also applies internally to our organizations. I mean, in let's say my father's generation, I mean, he worked with the same organization for 42 years. I, I, I still have problems digesting that. Um, but here, here is, you know, uh, I, I wouldn't even say my generation. I'm already looking at the next generation because my nephew just got in the workforce and I'm looking at him and I'm just wondering, okay, so how long is he going to take before he moves on to his next job? And then he's already building his experience to say, okay, but this is what was a best practice there. So why aren't we doing it the same way? Or yeah, this is not right. And I've heard this from my friend, et cetera, et cetera. He's just more exposed as an internal customer within the organization. So mm -hmm. obviously for him, it is about demanding whatever is the best of all the available options. Yeah, I love the point of how you gave this example of having three or four generations together and having conversations about how life has changed. And yes, that's a kind of a way in which our customer journey has also been shaped as customers, regardless of our geographical location as well. Okay, so for organizations or for companies who are uh, wanting to build their A game around this customer centricity, well, they might already be there and they want to take it to the next level, or they might just be starting and want to completely transform their culture to a customer-centric one. What do you think is the best way forward for these organizations to go? Rather, uh, what, what is the um, linchpin in their uh, action plan of having a customer-centric culture? I, I am thinking about two linchpins. Maybe they are connected. I'm not sure I have the connection sorted in my head right now. Um, I think one is every individual uh, in an organization, in a business, I'm just using it interchangeably, needs to have KPIs which are aligned with their customers, whoever their customers are. Important, 
they need to know who their customers are if they are clear on who their customers are and if they are clear on what those kpis are which their customers expect then the organization is already on the journey about being customer centric and about being driving it as uh, one of their uh, you know kind of success pillars for me uh, one belief i've always had you know whether internal or external and this is like uh, uh, to me the foundation and i i keep i keep telling this to you know everybody who bothers to listen you know everything speaks how i take care of a customer whoever that is is a reflection of how everything else will fall in place so if think about an organization let's let's just take let's say an appliance system just because i've never touched that as an industry um but if i take think about that now i am an employee in the organization i'm also a user for that company's product mm-hmm. right how i am taken care of as an employee is ideally a reflection of how as a customer of that company's product will i be taken care the day as organizations we realize that this is all in the same value chain and one impact at one end or anywhere in the middle of it will affect the results right at the end the day we realize this whole piece will be the day we know we have arrived because we figured out half the problem the other half will be just to then make sure that this whole chain works towards an objective that we lay out for ourselves whether like i said you know from a top line market share growth profitability it all falls in place and then you are poised to make it happen as per your expectations so that in a nutshell supriya would be my thought on the question and i specifically liked it when you hit the nail with the word taken care of so when we say service we say service is taking action to create value for someone you care for and when you use the word care i was like yes this is absolutely it whether we are talking about our families or about the organizations about our employees teams or real end users it is all about taking care and that commitment of yours to take care of that person in whatever possible way you can or you would be doing depending on your role where you are absolutely in fact uh, you know i i i'm so glad you picked on that word because i was actually talking about an organization i was associated with where caring was one of our values mm. and when you are an employee with such an organization you assume okay caring means i will be taken care of <laughs> but when you take that as an organization's value you are actually saying you will care for everybody whose lives you touch whether it's a shareholder whether it's a vendor whether it's a channel partner a customer an employee and so on and so forth so yes organizations that realize that work across the spectrum and the only way to achieve success in the long term to me is to be working across the spectrum and driving customer centricity so that's i would say once again in a nutshell i've got too many nuts over there in my shell and me being customer obsessed already i uh, there's something that comes to my mind so uh, when i was living in the united states there was a supermarket where uh, on the outside there was a big uh, stone kind of a thing on that stone is carved uh, customer is always right if not look at the first statement again so what do you have to say about that <laughs> right, right no well <laughs> you know right or wrong sometimes becomes a perspective okay so it's it's very uh, it's very difficult to say whether i want to classify it as right or mm-hmm. wrong i think um, i i can be very principled and i can be wanting to be fair and just um and and you know like yeah this is my policy this is my laid down rule so we will go by this would that be right the answer maybe maybe not right so to me i think the minute you have 
employees and and of course the supermarket uh, was putting this down for its employees as well as the customers walking in and out but the minute you have employees who feel the ownership of a customer's experience mm. that point in time it doesn't matter whether the customers were right or wrong the employees will know what needs to be done to right the situation which seemingly to the customer was wrong and to me that's what matters it doesn't matter who was right or who was wrong somebody felt it was wrong somebody perceived it as being wrong and we need to set it right and that's what we need to get done if we've got to be in the game and we've got to be in the game ahead of the curve the way you are driving this point home that uh, the employees or the team members regardless of whether they are directly interacting with the end users or they are not they are at the back end they need to take ownership of customer experience and once they realize that ownership things are automatically taken care of doesn't matter who is right or who is wrong it's about writing the situation and not about uh, claiming who was right or who wasn't that is my takeaway and i'm confident that all our listeners have also driven this point home that yes it is about taking ownership of customer experience regardless of what your profile is within the organization so bhavna uh, what is your final message for our business leaders who are wanting to leverage on customer experience as a point for business growth so to me uh, i would say you know there is something which i mentioned earlier on uh, that i learned very early in my career and that is everything speaks whatever we do however we execute we need to know that it matters and sometimes as businesses or as individuals we may not directly see the link but it does leave a message in the mind of the person who may be at the other end of the experience whether it's about how the office was whether it's about the chair the service the product whatever we can not imagine how each aspect of the way we do business of the way we come across to our stakeholders can actually speak loads about what it would mean to be a customer to our business and hence let's just make sure we are not doing lip service but we genuinely believe in it because if we genuinely believe in it then everything that we will do will reflect it and hence everything that we will attempt to do will lead towards the success of that organization so everything speaks that's bhavna's word for all of us thank you so much for being with us it was really wonderful to have this conversation around customer experience with you thank you so much supriya appreciate you getting me here to speak to you and the audience for listening to CXO with your host Supriya. I hope you enjoyed a dive into the nitty-gritty of customer experience. If you are committed to applying these ideas in the real world, stay tuned with me. Don't forget to check out all the links and resources in the show notes. That's all for this episode, folks. See you next time.